Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Cooper Van Dries, and you're watching Wednesday Afternoon Football, and we're going to be talking about that, the college football playoff. They released their first rankings last night, and to no doubt, they were controversial. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about the college football playoff and so much more right after this. Hey everybody, thank you once again for joining me. I'm Cooper Van Driesch on Wednesday Afternoon Football. And like I said before we went into the intro, the college football playoff released their official rankings last night on ESPN and they were controversial. And that's with anything college football, but especially the college football, play college football playoff because those are the rankings that matter. Those are the rankings that people care about and those are the rankings that get you into bowl games. The big bowl games, not just the six and six bowl games, not just the Gasper Road Bowl, we're talking about the Cotton Bowl, we're talking about the college football semifinals, we're talking about the college football playoff national championship game. Now, obviously, you don't just win that game. There's a few steps there. But let's take a look at the rankings, 25 all the way to number one. And we're going to see what I think and what could be different, what's super controversial, what's right, what's wrong, what the committee should be better for next week. But again, when you're looking at these rankings, don't really matter because next week are the rankings that are going to matter more. And the week after that, are going to matter more than that. All waiting until after conference championship weekend. Those are the rankings that matter. Those are the rankings that are going to decide the fate of every team. So that being said, I got the rankings pulled up on my computer. So we're going to dive right in and talk about all of them. So obviously, we'll go 25 to 21. We'll do it in segments. And we'll kind of break down the biggest things from each segment. So first off, we're going to go 25 is UCF, 24, Texas, 23, Oregon State, 22, NC State, and then 21, Wake Forest. So pretty hefty power five there. We got two ACC schools, we got a Pac-12 school, we got a Big 12 school, and then we got an American Conference school. So all over the place. But I think the most exciting one there would be UCF, um, number 25. Huge win over the weekend over Cincinnati, who had a 19-game conference winning streak going into that game. Um, last few minute touchdown by UCF helped them secure the win there over the Bearcats, who were ranked in the AP poll going into that weekend and UCF was unranked. Now the next one, number 24, is probably the most controversial out of this group, Texas. At five and three, they're 24th in the nation in this poll. Not ranked in the AP poll. Again, that poll is just from the writers. Um, they were 26, they're just out of the poll right there. I think they missed it by 30-ish uh, votes. So again, UCF was the 25th in that poll. But what surprised me about Texas, yes, they've had some pretty okay losses, but Texas always seems to get the, a buy with, the, with, the, with any committee. It's usually, Super high ranked in a preseason AP pool, and then they use up not living up to expectations. So, I mean, eh, I'm not really sure if the Longhorns are where they're supposed to be. Yes, they played Texas really close. They got beat by Texas Tech, but then Quinn Ewers wasn't in, so that's where that effect comes in. Um, they got beat by Oklahoma State in the last few minutes. They had the chance to win. Didn't execute pr perfectly at the end of the game there. So we'll just have to see where Texas ends up, because if they keep winning, yeah, great, I was wrong. But right now, I'm not, I, I think they're, it's too early to rank them in the top 25 when there's another great team in Liberty who's 7-1 and one with a close loss to Rake Forest, who we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, who only lost because of a two-point conversion play that didn't work out. So I think Liberty got snubbed in place of Texas. And let's see some, and he, and Liberty in, as an independent, let's see some of those schools get in there. We don't have any, we don't have any big independents schools ranked with Notre Dame, meet at 5-3. Arguably has some better wins um, over Texas, but again, we'll just have to see how that goes. Now moving to 23, Oregon State, they broke a streak getting ranked in the AP poll as well as they lost in their rank is 2013, so that's a nine-year streak that was broken for them. So big for the Oregon State Beavers. But again, I think um, Pac-12 is a lot stronger this year than anyone thought it was going to be. So again, as Oregon State keeps playing, they have a big game this weekend against Washington, who's also a pretty big conference contender, not, not necessarily for the conference championship, but one of the most powerful teams in the Pac-12. And again, no one thought the Pac-12 was going to be this good this year, especially after the news over the summer that USC and UCLA were departing for the Big Ten. Now, 22, NC State. And this is another one, uh, do we rank them? Yes, they had some okay wins, fell to Clemson, but then they barely beat a team that was two and five in Virginia Tech. Yes, Virginia Tech is historically good at football, but again, new coach this year, so uh, we didn't really expect that much for Virginia Tech. And they almost lost them. It came down to the end, just barely squeaked out the win. Oh, it's an okay ranking. Would I probably put them closer to 24? Probably, 
and move to Liberty up there. Yeah, but again, okay, the ACC is not as strong as people thought this year. We'll get more into that in Clemson. That's the biggest gripe against Clemson, who, who surprisingly has the most negative things said about them this year, which usually you never hear anything negative said about Clemson. It's usually one of those blue buds that everyone loves. So we'll talk about more when we get to Clemson. But again, the ACC is not as strong this year as you would expect. And then now Wake Forest. They had a really troubling loss over the weekend to Louisville. Um, wasn't it wasn't close Louisville dominated the whole game start to finish so they struggled out over the weekend um, and then they had an overtime loss to Clemson so that makes me that's where you go back into the how strong really is the ACC and should these ACT, ACC teams be ranked that high now if you go 13-0 with that conference championship no doubt that you'll have a contender for the playoff we'll just have to see so now let's go to 22, ranking 16. So coming at 20 is Syracuse, 19 is Tulane, 18, Oklahoma State, 17, North Carolina, and 16, Illinois. So starting off with the, the, the Qs, the Orange, uh, had a really troubling loss to Notre Dame by plus 16 points at the JMA Wireless Dome over the weekend, a home game, an orange out. Um, Dino Babers has done a great job this season. They played Clemson close, only lost in the, final, in the fourth quarter. Um, just weren't able to hold on and score the points they needed in the second half. And on top of that, um, they just didn't look like they had control of the ball. Um, there was a little, there were a few minutes in the third quarter where uh, maybe can they come back, but Notre Dame really put it to them the, in the end. And starting off with an interception, which is a thing Notre Dame has been known for this season. That's the second time it's happened. They did against BYU, and now they did against Syracuse to start off the game. So it's been a thing they've kind of gotten known for. So again, it was, I guess it wasn't really a surprise that Notre Dame pulled it out. They were only three and a half point underdogs. But again, the Qs look really good this year, and if they win out the rest of the schedule, they have a very good chance of making a New Year's Six Bowl game. But again, there's lots of teams ahead of them, so a lot has to go their way for that to happen. And now looking at two, now we're going to move to 19, Tulane, the best non-Power 5 team in the country. Tulane broke a record for like one of the longest times being unranked. The last time they were ranked were in the 90s when a Bowden coached them. So just put you in perspective how good they are this year and how good this team is to be ranked in a nation where college football is all over the place this year. I mean, you look at what the starting top six was at the beginning of the season, Texas A&M and Notre Dame were ranked in those, and now they're unranked. And Texas A&M sits at three and five. So we're just going to have to see how the rest of the season plays out for both of those teams. But anyway, back to Tulane. The Green Wave doing great this year. Big thing is still out of them as the season goes on, and they have a pretty good chance of making a New Year's Six Bowl game as well if they continue to win. But they have to continue to win. And and the American Conference is not as weak as people may think. We got UCF, we got Cincinnati, and then we have Tulane as well. So let's see how that plays out. And if they keep winning, they got a pretty good chance of making one of those big bowl games at the end of the year. And then now to number 18, Oklahoma State suffered a, re suffered a really bad loss over the weekend to, Ken to excuse me, Kansas State, 48 to zero, the worst loss ever to a Mike Gundy team. So um, they they can bounce back. They won the Fiesta Bowl last year. Um, they were in that New Year's Six Bowl game, so I guess they, if they keep winning, there you are at six and two right now. Um, when you get to those two losses, it is harder to make um, one of those bigger bowl games just because there's so many good teams. So there are a lot of good bowl, good bowl games, so you could see them in a Citrus Bowl situation like that. We'll just have to see where Alabama falls in that too, because if Alabama doesn't make the playoff, they're obviously going to get one of the better bowl games just because of the name recognition Alabama. And we have a lot to say about Alabama too, so we'll get to that. And number 17, North Carolina. Mac is back. Uh, great team this year, that one loss to Notre Dame. They look great. Drake May is a Heisman sleeper. I don't think he gets nearly enough attention. He's led some great wins for them, especially over the past week against Pitt. Came back at the end and that fourth quarter. What a great win for the Tar Heels. Mac Brown knows how to coach. Won a national championship down in Texas in 2005 and then was a runner up in 2009. So he knows how to coach. Has a thing for good quarterbacks. So Vince Young, Colt McCoy. So if Drake May stays healthy. Who knows what's possible for the Tar Heels the rest of the season. So let's keep an eye on them as well. And then rounding out our 16 through 20 is Illinois. I know I have an Illinois shirt on. Not personally an Illinois fan. I just love the, got to rep the college merches, merch all the time. But Brett Bielema this year has done a great job at the helm for Illinois. I mean, they weren't, the last time they were ranked were 2011. So you just think about that and then how this has kind of been the year for streaks to be ended. And I think if they are, keep the trajectory they're on, they're going to have a great rest of their season. They could be in that Big Ten championship game if things fall their way. If Ohio State or Michigan loses, 
no, uh, excuse me, the, whichever one loses, that's who most likely Illinois is going to face in that playoff. So we'll just have to see. But we'll have 15 through 1 coming up right after this. Hey guys, you're back on Wednesday Afternoon Football. We're talking about the college football playoff top 25 rankings that were released last night on ESPN. So let's dive right back in. And before the break, we talked about Illinois. And I for one to mention this, the only thing that could possibly hurt Illinois from being ranked higher is that loss to Indiana early in the season, who's having a, who as Indiana as a team is struggling. So that's the only thing I could see that really would affect them. But again, if they just have one loss, they'll be fine. We'll just have to see how that goes for Illinois. But again, Brent, Brent Bielema doing a great job over there at Illinois in Champaign. Now, let's look at rankings 15 through 11. Uh, not too many crazy ones here, but let's just talk about them. So 15, we got Penn State coming off a loss of against Ohio State. Utah at 14, 13, Kansas State after a big win that we talked about earlier at Oklahoma State. UCLA at 12 and 11, Ole Miss. So let's talk about it. So Penn State, tough loss over the weekend at home against Penn State. I think that, that game should have been a night game. It would have been, the environment would have been crazy. If you get Beaver Stadium rocking in a whiteout. But again, it's the kind of thing with big noon kickoff when they have their show there, the time gets changed to noon. So it kind of messes with that feeling. Um, but again, I think Penn State is a, is a better team than we saw last year. They, they kind of struggled at some points when you, when you think about it. But this year is a different team. They have two losses. So to see them in a Big Ten championship game is gonna be kind of hard to see unless Something goes way wrong for either Ohio State or Michigan. Those are both the teams that have to battle to get there. So we'll have to see what happens for the Nittany Lions, but James Franklin did another great job there. And what I heard before season is that, oh, Illinois peaked. They won't be where they were before. Ah, blah, blah, blah. There's just a bunch of talk. Because you never know how a team is going to be year to year. I don't like when that assumption just are not there because, oh, the recruiting isn't the same as it once was, like it was in 2016 when he won the Big Ten. Uh, James Franklin knows how to coach. You want to get the job at Penn City if you didn't know how to coach. So... Again, the New Lions, still a lot, of, a lot of football left to play. I think that's the biggest thing, too. There's lots of football left to play. So a lot can change. Just because your team is in the rankings now, we still got a whole month of November and conference championships left. So don't rule out anything. I mean, obviously, if your team's like 1-8 or 1-7, it's going to be pretty hard to be ranked, even if you do win out. But, again, if you keep winning or if you break a losing streak that you're right there, and you could, be in these, you could be in these rankings, and you could make a New Year's Six Bowl game. Again, that's hard. There's some pretty big teams that are going to have to, everything's going to have to go right. But we've seen in the past, and we'll talk about it a little bit later. Okay, number 14, Utah. The Utes struggled early this season. and got suffered losses to Florida in the Swamp and then UCLA at the, um, in, at the Rose Bowl. So some tough losses. UCLA's 13 fans must have thrown them off there a little bit in that game. So we'll just have to see. But, again, the Utes look great. I have lots of faith in Kyle Whittenham, who, their coach, who's been there a long time. Um, and I think he's doing the right job. He's been there since Erwin Meyer departed for Florida. And he knows, he knows Utah better than anyone else. But he's the best coach for that program right now. So if you're with some of that long, you know your commitment to the program. And he won his first Pac-12 title last year. So, again, lots of success with him. I don't think he'll they'll necessarily be in the running for the Pac-12 championship because we have teams like UCLA, Utah, excuse me, not Utah, UCLA, USC, and Oregon, who are always up there and without divisions. It kind of messes, changes things. Just the two teams with the best two records are going to be playing for the conference title for the Pac-12. Now, number 13, Kansas State. Huge win over the weekend against Mike Gundy and the Cowboys. So I think that's another team that Chris Kielman is doing a great job there as well. And he's got the, he's got the quarterback that he needs. And... College Day, get a great segment about that coming from Nebraska. And if they keep winning, they could see themselves in a big, big 12 title game. So two purple teams, Kansas State, TCU. We'll talk about a little bit who's having a great season. We'll just have to see. Now, number 12, UCLA. Chip Kelly. One loss and only to his old team, Oregon, who he hasn't been able to beat yet. But if he keeps this up, maybe in a few years, we'll see a Chip Kelly go into Austin Stadium where it never rains and pull out a win. For the UCL for UCLA, um, again, I, I didn't have a lot of faith in Chip Kelly this season. And just he's been there a few years, hasn't really had great results. It seemed like he had peaked at Oregon when he was there, when he went to the national championship with them. But I was wrong. Sitting at seven and one, ranked twelfth in the nation. 
that's pretty dang good. And if it was two, even two years from now, we might have it when we have a 12-team playoff. It'd be like, UCLA would be sitting back kind of, but not too much because they're right on the border right there. So again, we'll just have to see how the Bruins can finish out their season. And lastly in this section, Old Miss, Lane Kiffin's team came out, had a tough loss to LSU in, in Death Valley. But their season is definitely far from over. And I've got a lot of faith in Lane Kiffin and his Ole Miss Rebels as we move through the season. And now, what we've all been waiting for, the top 10. Okay, maybe not what we've all been waiting for. We probably mostly know the rankings. But some of the biggest names in college football right now, let's do 10 through 7. And then we'll do 6 through 1 in kind of individually basis. But let's just dive right in. Okay, number 10, LSU. Brian Kelly's first year down in the bayou. N number 9, Southern California. Lincoln Riley's first, first year up at the Coliseum. Number eight, Oregon, another first year head coach. And number seven, TCU, another first year head coach. So some great things happening for these first year head coaches at their new schools. And all of these coaches at these schools, I just wanna, except for Oregon, who is Cal Herman defensive coordinator spot at Georgia, were proven themselves. Lincoln Riley, Southern Cal, did great Oklahoma, got to the college football playoff. Brian Kelly at Notre Dame, got to the college football playoff. And then Sonny, Sonny Dykes had some success where he's been as well. So some great teams. Let's start off with the Bayou Bengals, LSU, and Brian Kelly's first year down in the boot. So Notre Dame fans were shocked when he left back in December. There was no doubt. There was lots of anger up in South Bend. But there was no doubt that Brian Kelly is, can be a winner wherever he goes. We saw it at Cincinnati, saw it at Grand Valley, and saw it at Notre Dame. So... Can Brian Kelly win a national championship? I don't know, that's hard to answer right now. It's still early in his tenure there. He's gotta keep winning, that's the biggest thing. If he doesn't keep winning, he'll be gone. I mean, when we saw those losses to Florida State and, and um, Tennessee, they were calling for his job. I mean, he, it's hard to replace a guy like Ed Orgeron. Now, I know his last season they were a little rough, but when you have a personality like that who fit the LSU brand so well and won a national championship there in 2019, it's hard to replace a guy like that. And as I was obviously the motives for Brian Kelly to go down there. Uh, the last three coaches have won a national championship, Saban, Miles, or Drawn. So obviously, we'll have to see where Kelly goes. But the only thing that, that is going to stop them is Brian Kelly kind of has a theme for not being able to always pull out those big games. Um, we saw it in 2012 when they played Alabama National Championship. We saw it when they went back to the college football playoff two times. We're just never really there. And of course, that's a Notre Dame thing as well. People always say that Notre Dame was never running it to that level, something I don't necessarily agree with. But we'll just have to see how Brian Kelly does. If he can win the big games, then he does have a, a possibility of getting the college football playoff, not this year, but in the years to come. Number nine, Southern Cal. Big things happening out there in California. And we're gonna, we talked about UCLA and now USC, those two conference kind of the Pac-12 and with Oregon. So like I said earlier, Pac-12 is a lot better than anyone could have thought this year. And it's going to be interesting to see how their conference, how their conference play, shakes out because Southern Cal and Oregon both in at 7-1 and one and UCLA. If they suffer one more loss, it kind of puts them out of the running for the playoff because you really only see those one-loss teams get in just because how competitive it is with four teams. you got to be the four best teams in college football when there's over 130. So we'll just have to see how Southern Cal and Lincoln Riley does. But they got some big games left. Most notably Notre Dame at the close of their season who they always close out with. At number eight, we got Oregon. You got a big win over UCLA up in Austin a few weeks ago. College game day was there for the occasion. Coach Corso loves his duck, and he picked them to win, and they did. So if Oregon keeps winning, they could see them. My only issue with Oregon in the playoff is they played Georgia earlier in the year and got blown out. They only scored a touch, a field goal, so they only scored three points. So let's say that Georgia, with one loss to Tennessee this weekend, or no losses in a conference championship gets in the playoff and Oregon keeps winning with their and they win the Pac-12 and get in the conference champ, and get into the and win their conference and then get into the college football playoff. My only issue is we already know the result. So why put them in if we already know the result? Again, it's hard to judge a team the best season from the beginning of the season to now. But if we already know the result, why do we put this team in when another team could have the opportunity to go in as well? So, again, Oregon still has a lot to prove, but I, there's no doubt that they have that chance. Like, I if all these teams have a chance in the top 10, and really all the teams in the top 16, as we'll get to when we talk to talk about Ohio State. Number seven, TCU, the Horned Frogs. We're coming off a tough season last year. Part of ways with head coach Brian Sunny Dykes. Undefeated, eight, no. Now, 
I truly believe they've been disrespected by the AP poll, the coaches poll, and this poll. They should not be behind Alabama, who is seven to one. I mean, there's no doubt that Alabama is a great team, and I have lots of respect for what all of Nick, all of Nick Saban has done there. But I feel like TCU, with those four ranked wins, four or five ranked wins, and and each week, they've proven themselves. So they should be in the top six. The, the six undefeated teams should be in the top six. Now I don't want to normally say that. Um, I, I would have said last year for Cincinnati just because they played some big teams. But this year, I, I think that TCU needs to be above, above Alabama. And they play LSU this weekend, so it's going to be a big game for either team. We'll just have to see. If, if LSU wins, there's no way Alabama's going to fall down. Or, or I would think Alabama would fall down, but you know, the committee might show some love towards Alabama. I don't know. We'll just have to see. But again, the, the Alabama didn't make it in 2019. So they could not make it again in 2022. The last championship came in 20, which was only two years ago, which feels like a lot longer than ago because that COVID season made it feel like all messed up. We'll just have to see where TCU continues. But if they continue to win, there's no doubt that they have a, they, they, I think they'll make the, the college football playoff. And now we're going to do our 6-1 through one individually. Coming in at number six, the Crimson Tide from Tuscaloosa, the, Alab the, the Alabama squad, suffered a light loss to Tennessee and Knoxville, broke a losing streak. Nick Saban had never lost to the to the Vols. And I, I'm just, I'm the, the Alabama team we've seen this year is not the dominant Alabama teams we've seen in the past. Squeaky went over Texas, squeaky went over Texas A&M, both by small margins. So I just don't think Nick Saban's, his squad this year is what I would consider his best. I mean, he considered last year a rebuilding year but they won a conference championship and lost a national championship game. So I don't know, is a rebuilding year when you don't win the national championship? I, I, I don't know. I, I truly don't know. But we'll have to see how Nick goes the rest of the season. If they win this weekend against LSU, they still have a pretty good chance. There will be the, I would I believe to be the winner in their division of the SEC. So again, lots of football left to play. Not really not Alabama completely, but I think they were ruled in favor just because they were Alabama above a team like TCU. Okay, number five. We're in the top five. Michigan. Now, I know a lot of people are surprised by this. But I think the, only, the thing that's hurt Cle Michigan the most, and I guess you could say this too, we'll go with number four right now as well as Clemson, is their non-conference schedule. They were both pretty weak. You look at Michigan's more, I guess they, Michigan's non-conference schedule looks weaker because of how much they blew out their opponents by, which is great for Michigan and Jim Harbaugh. Came off a big win over the weekend against Michigan State where there were lots of controversy off the field, which you never want to see in football. You just want to let the football speak for, speak for itself. But uh, if Michigan beats Ohio State, it's hard to and win. And obviously, if you beat Ohio State, have a pretty good chance of winning the Big Ten, but again, Illinois, they, they, they win their division of the Big Ten and get there to play Michigan in the Big Ten Championship in Indianapolis, you'd have to imagine that they have a pretty good chance of winning and then making it to the college football playoff in some capacity. As probably most likely as a four seed, maybe a three seed, because a lot of these teams play each other. So we'll just have to see where these top five teams play each other. And like we said, number four is Clemson. Not conference schedule. Lots of people don't think they are ranked where they should be. I think they should be a little bit lower. Uh, I kind of have to agree. Not a super strong schedule yet. They barely beat Wake Forest, who's lower, who's not a bad team by any way of the means. And they barely beat Syracuse as well, who's also not a bad team. So we'll just have to see where Clemson lands up. They have a pretty tough matchup. They go into South Bend, play Notre Dame this weekend, and Marcus Freeman's first year at the helm. And last time they were in South Bend, they lost in double overtime. So we'll just have to see. And they, then both Notre Dame and Clemson made the playoff of that year. It's obviously not going to happen this year, but Clemson does still have a chance. And they do have a pretty good chance to make the ACC championship game. Again, that's really, there's no doubt that they'll make it. And on the other, the coastal side is what you, want, you would think there might be some changes, but I think right now, looking at the ACC championship game, the season of the day, be North Carolina and Clemson in the ACC title game. And our top three, coming in at three, Georgia, which is pretty surprising. Committee denied all of us fans for a one versus two matchup this weekend for Tennessee and Georgia. But again, the dogs, they've struggled. Close losses to Mizzou. They almost lost to Mizzou. And then they had a close win over Kent State as well. So you wonder, there's no doubt they can play in those big games like they did against Oregon, but can they play in the, the small games that mean, really, that mean, that have a little bit of meaning too? Because you don't win the small games or you can't make it into the place to win the big games. So again, 
a lot's going to have to go the right way for Georgia. They're going to have to win this weekend against Tennessee. And if they don't, I'm not really not that concerned. If they don't win, I think they still have a pretty good chance of making the playoff. We'll just have to see. And number two, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Number two team in the nation. Uh, I said I wanted to talk about them a little bit more because for all the teams that are like, oh, we're too low right now, still got a lot of work up to do. In 2014, the first year of the college football playoff, initial rankings, the Buckeyes came in 16th. But they made the playoff and they won the national championship. So just because you're ranked low right now does not mean that's going to be the, the way it's going to be in a, in a month when the, tr the true final rankings come out. So again, Buckeyes looking pretty good right now. Michigan did beat Penn State by more, but again, that doesn't really matter. But that's going to be the game. It's going to be a pretty big game this year with what looks like going to be a top five matchup. So we'll just have to see. And it's in the, it's in the shoe this year. It's not at Michigan Stadium. So we'll just have to see. And finally, your number one team in the nation. A little bit of a drum roll. No surprise, the Tennessee Volunteers. They knocked off Alabama a few weeks ago. Stormed the field. Took down the goal post. Threw in the river. Having a great season. And I don't think you look at Josh Heupel when he's hired two years ago and say, oh yeah, he's contending for a national championship in two years, especially where Tennessee was at the end of 2020. So again, hats off to Josh Heupel and all he's been able to do there. Short time, Hendon Hooker, a Heisman favorite right now. The balls look great. The only thing that's not great would be their defense. You need to have it on both sides of the ball. Penalties, people would say, help them beat Alabama. But again, you beat a good football team like Alabama, it's going to be highly rewarding in the polls, you would think. So, play Georgia this week in a one versus three matchup in the college football playoff polls, a one versus two matchup in the AP poll. But the only poll that matters is the CFP poll, which we just talked about today. So, that's the end of Wednesday football talk. We're going to have this every week leading up to the season. There's lots going to change. You got to keep watching college football, watch college game on Saturday, start your game day the right day with college football. And just keep rolling. Got to watch everything. Got to pay attention. Where do you think the team should have been? My top four right now, Tennessee, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan. All right, so right now, lots of football left to play. Someone's going to lose in that top four. It's going to have to happen. With the game, in, the game in Columbus, and then later this week, there's another game. The lights just went out on me, so I think that means it's time for me to wrap up. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Cooper Andrich. Until next time. This was Wednesday College Football Talk.